This is Radio TV Fauna Nut, and here's a real classy specimen for your enjoyment. This is an Emerson 5 tube radio from the 1940s. It's not in a wooden cabinet. It's not even in a Bakelite cabinet. It's in what appears to be a cardboard cabinet with some kind of some kind of laminate finish over it. Very classy. You know, when it costs just too much to build a Bakelite cabinet and you need to offer a, a discount radio, then just put it in a cardboard cabinet. And you can see the top is all warped, likely from tube heat and other elements over the past 70-something years. On the top of the radio, we have where someone stuck a return address label. Can't read it all because it's scratched out, but it definitely came from the Atlanta, Georgia area. And their last name was Horn, and it has a zip code. So that tells me that that label was put on sometime in the mid-60s or later. Anything before that would have had a zone number instead of a zip code. And we see some writing on top of the cabinet here. Can't make it out either. Not fully. But it looks like I see McPherson in March 1940-something written here. All right, let's pull the chassis and see what we got. And to match the class of this cabinet, we have the ultra-classy power cord replacement where they just spliced on to the uh, stub of the old cracked, worn-out power cord. Just an accident waiting to happen. And we can tell the chassis has been removed and for service probably multiple times because we have one missing chassis mounting bolt and then we have a flathead bolt on this side and a Phillips head bolt on this side so I, I just don't know and I see this all the time I don't know why people can't put the uh, correct mounting bolts back in place if it had three put three back in it and to keep up with them just put them in a little bowl or a ziplock bag or whatever yeah, here's the chassis, and we have what looks like a bunch of old dried out masking tape laying inside. Looks like the speaker has been patched. Looks like it needs to be patched some more. Looking underneath, I see a orange drop capacitor that's obviously a replacement, and this planet filter cap is a replacement, and this Black Beauty here, what is this, a pyramid or a spray? Let's see. It's basically a spray, probably 1950s vintage, early 60s maybe. Uh, here's the power cord, the original power cord. This originally had a cloth covered cord on it. Here's the inside of the cabinet. I see nothing that gives me any indication as far as a model number. I suppose maybe I could straighten out that top with some steam and straighten it out and and then let it cool and then maybe it would stay straight. I put some kind of brace back there. I don't know. The front, we have a speaker grill bar. It's busted. I could glue that back. And as far as all the nicks and dings, I guess some white touch-up paint would, would uh, fix that. By this having a cloth-covered power cord and an electrodynamic speaker, I, I'd say this is probably from the late 30s, maybe very early 40s, but definitely not, definitely before World War II. But I can't find any indication of a model number anywhere. Okay, this orange drop is the plate to cathode uh, bypass capacitor on the, on the audio output tube and this spray cap is the plate to grid coupling capacitor for the audio output tube and of course this planet thing is our main B plus filter capacitor which is probably dried out by now but heck I think I'm going to put some juice to this and see what happens 
Well, there's really no need in plugging it in and turning it on because we have no continuity across the power plug. Now, can that be the switch? Can it be the... Is it one of the tube filaments? Is it the power cord? What is it? Let's find out. Well, it's always nice to see something you've never seen before. Here's a tube in the radio, a Type 12 SK7, and it says Made in USA for ADT by RCA. And it's date coded the 48th week of 1964. Okay, so you're going to go out of focus. Let's try that again. That's better. Now that ADT sort of looks like the ADT security alarm logo, and I know they've been around a long time, so I guess if this is the same company, I suppose back in the 60s they had tube-based control circuits in their alarm systems. So, yeah, that's interesting, but I'm not finding any opens anywhere. All the tube filaments have continuity. The power cord shows continuity as does the uh, all-phone switch. All right, our ground connection is good, so I trace through the rectifier. We have continuity through the rectifier filament. Over here to the audio output tube filament, it runs in on pin 8, comes out on pin 2. I have nothing on pin 2. I could have swore I checked this tube. All right, it was a dirty connection on the uh, output tube filament connection. I'm applying 110 volts, volume up all the way, and this is all I'm getting. Okay, I think the next thing we should do is put a put a proper power cord on here and get rid of this lovely mess. That way we can work on it without fear of these touching and blowing something namely the fuse in my power supply here. Alright, power cord replaced. Now I'm in interested to see how leaky this spray capacitor is on here, so let's check the let's check to see what we got on the on the grid side of it. Oh yes, it's leaky. We got about three point eight volts with reference to to uh ground all right, with it disconnected, unloaded, we have 43 volts on the plate side, the input of the capacitor, and output we have 30-something volts, 32, 31 volts. So yeah, that capacitor is very leaky, and that's not a surprise. Okay, I got it on a talk station, so we can work on this without fear of getting a copyright strike. And that tuning condenser is very erratic. I went ahead and replaced the uh, coupling capacitor with one of my good orange drops, and I chose an orange drop because of its extra long leads. But despite that, it still wasn't long enough to reach from here all the way on over here, so I had to I had to J-hook it on and heat shrink it to the existing lead. But we now have we now have zero volts on the uh, grid of the output tube, and that's what we want. This cap clipped loose is our across the line firecracker, and I don't want it shorting out and blowing out the rectifier tube filament. Those 35Z5s are getting kind of kind of rare over here, and I don't need to be blowing any out unnecessarily. And I really can't think of any necessary reason to blow one out. All right, I'm checking voltages on the audio output tube, and they're way low, about half what they should be, and if they're low there, they're going to be low everywhere else, most likely. Audio output tube, screen grid voltage, 56 volts, and this thing's trying to fall over while I'm working on it. Okay, plate voltage. That's not what I wanted. 55 on the plate. And 2.5 on the cathode. That's all low. Okay, let's move back to the cathode or the rectifier tube and just see what we got coming off of there. Alright, I got 71 volts coming off of the 
cathode or the rectifier. Now that means we either have a very weak rectifier tube or we have something in the circuit as in a capacitor that's leaky and severely loading it down, loading down the power supply. Or if we have an input resistor on the AC side, which I haven't looked well enough yet, that resistor could be way up in value and uh, limiting the amount of AC going into the rectifier tube. And if there's not enough AC going in the rectifier tube, there's not going to be enough DC coming out of it. So, uh, okay, I've got 109 volts going into the plate of the rectifier, which is about what it should be going through that tap on the filament. Coming out of the rectifier, and by the way, I had my power supply set down to 110. I moved it up to 120, which under normal circumstances, that wouldn't make any difference, but I could tell it got louder whenever I cranked it up. So let's let our guest uh, respond to that very notion. We'll start with that one of, uh, of, of the issue of storage. Uh, you would think that there would be, I guess... Uh, Frozen food storage capacity. All right, I've got 79 volts on the cathode, which isn't enough. Should be more than that. And set to AC, I've got 32 volts there. So that don't look that don't look too kosher. All right, this planet filter cap is weak. It's supposed to be 30. This red wire, and I'm only reading six. And the yellow that's supposed to be 50, it's reading 8.2. So I'm surprised. I'm really surprised this thing wasn't humming like a son of a gun. Well, no, I'm really not because this uses a field coil speaker with the uh, field coil acting as a choke. So, so the uh, speaker field was filtering out most of the hum. In fact, I think this cap is a bit too big anyway with a field coil filter choke. Dual 20s ought to be enough, and the ESR is way high on this, about 25 ohms on the on the 50 microfarad section. And not much not much better on the 30 microfarad. So let's change this. Well, you know what? It's about time to call it a day. I think we're going to wait until tomorrow to uh, slap these new filter caps in here. I was looking for a date code on here, but I really don't see one. I know these were used in sets. I know GE was using them in some of their radios as recent as the late 60s. So we know they were around then. I can tell you the uh, planet capacitors like this that look like they have wax or whatever sealing the ends, those don't seem to hold up. The ones that are actually in a metal can with a red jacket on the can, those seem to hold up better. But this was the cheaper grade and these usually don't, this style of capacitor usually doesn't hold up. It's now literally a very dry electrolytic capacitor. Okay, I've done a little more work to the battered old cardboard cased Emerson radio. I found a Sprague Atom multi-section filter capacitor in my junk. The ESR is still perfect on it, and the uh, capacitance values are measuring well within tolerance. So I stuck it in here. This is the orange drop plate bypass cap on the output tube that somebody replaced. And this is the orange drop plate to grid coupling cap for the output tube that I replaced. This black cap right here is the across the line capacitor. Replace that with one out of my junk box. I think it's one I pulled off some old TV chassis or something. This is the volume control coupling cap. It's a solar seal tight. The one down here is the AVC filter and it seems to be working okay. Yes, I'm sure it's leaky, but there's very little voltage there, so no real threat there and there's the capacitor on the loop antenna that that isolates it from the chassis and those three capacitors I'm probably going to leave alone 
since this is more of a resurrection than a restoration, unless those three capacitors, one of those three, give me a reason to uh, change them. Single family residential properties, six hours away. One of them. Tuning capacitor is very cruddy. I think that's going to be the next step. And then we'll align it after we clean the tuning condenser. All right, signal generator set to 455. And we're feeding straight into the tuning condenser. Let's adjust these IF trimmers and see if we can peek them out. That doesn't sound like it's intermittent. connection on the chassis. Alright, let's try again. Let's cut the output down a little bit. These really weren't that bad off. Okay, I picked out the IF trimmers as well as the ones on the tuning condenser and it works now, but whenever we turn it almost wide open, it distorts and we have a a double peak there. And when we turn it down, we don't have that, so that could be that could be something to do with the AVC. Executive order on May 5th allowing restaurants to open up at 50% capacity for inside or outside dining. Clients, owners, employees must wear a mask at all times except for while eating inside the restaurant. Disposable menus and condiments are necessary. No buffets or self-serve stations. Hand sanitizer should be at multiple points within the business. All restaurants must close at 10 p.m. at night, and social distancing will be required for all customers waiting to be seated in between tables. Also, effective next week, we will be opening up more parts for there to be softball and also baseball. Just open up a barber shop. I need a haircut. Parks and Rec director and other personnel. This will keeps be on. I'm going to have to have somebody stand six feet away from me with that disorder as it long thing we used to, to, to trim so tree limbs and stuff. And will be permitted to be open between cut it that way through 7 p.m. All individuals must maintain social distancing of at least six feet and separation between each individual. The most important thing that we are doing right now in the city of Meridian is we are asking all citizens, employees, and customers to wear masks when working or shopping in the public. 
We're asking everyone that comes inside of a building or business to please comply with this order and wear a face mask. Failure to comply is punishable by a fine of up to $500 and or up to 30 Well, they said on the news he took that part away after consulting with the city attorney. They'll no longer fine people. And in all seriousness, I get the need to reopen. We need to reopen. But I also understand that, and I get the need that we don't need people catching this crap and have more people getting sick and dying. So it's a it's a double-edged sword. And me personally, I would rather stay out of the hospital and stay out of the uh, funeral home more than I would to get completely back to normal. Okay, the ABC filter is not the problem. I unclipped one end of it, substituted another cap, absolutely no change. So I put it back to the old one back in there, and you're probably asking, why did you put the old waxy back in there? Because putting a new cap in it didn't make any difference. It still distorts. Why not work? When we get the volume too high, and it really doesn't get as loud, undistorted as it should get. Does your brother have any other kids? There's one other thing I want to look at. There's a 15 mega ohm resistor. It's the grid bias resistor for the 12SQ7, the audio amplifier section. And I'm going to check it again, but I just checked it on my meter, which goes up to 20 megs. And it seems to be open, which is not a surprise. But you need to know Here's I a 10 meg jump across it. If you're unwilling to work, volume wide open. Let's work, take it off and see what happens. Skills, that's enabling. And Tina, you've got to be prepared for them to not be able to hear that. Yeah, they, they, there's a high probability they're only going to get angry. We don't care about us. Now that mom's gone, you hear all that stuff. Okay, I'm checking this 15 meg resistor. I'm not getting anything on the meter, so I might as well just go ahead and replace it. So it's got to be over 20 meg ohms for it not to be registering on the meter. All right, on the control grid, I'm getting between negative 0.3 and negative 6 and negative 0.6 volts with the original resistor. Okay, here's the resistor out of the circuit. All right, straighten out. Still not going to straighten out. Okay, that's a little better. Clean this up a bit. It's indeed a 15 meg and not reading anything on my meter. I don't have a 15 meg. 10 as high as I go, and that would probably work just as well. Here's a new 10 meg resistor, and it reads with intolerance 9.9 .9 megs. One thing about this meter and some other digital multimeters that I've owned on the 20 meg range, the meter is not instant responding. It takes it a few seconds to register the correct reading. Here's the 15 meg, and after several seconds, I'm not reading anything, so this one is indeed open. Right, that's why I'm Okay, I replaced that resistor, and that helped a great deal. Okay, well, uh, that seemed to help the audio problem a little bit, but the radio just is still not very perky. I could touch the loop antenna and get much more volume, and the AVC voltage would go more negative. But I'm reading across this what looks like a 3 meg ohm resistor in the AVC circuit, and I'm not reading anything. I'm on the 20 meg scale of my meter, and I'm not reading anything. And yes, my test lead is good because we're reading across that. So I think we need to find a, see if I got a 3.3 .3 meg or 2.7 meg or something close and stick in there. Alright, with the old resistor we're getting negative 1 volts on the AVC line. I'm going to bring my hand closer to the loop antenna. 
as it goes up to 2.9. Well, actually, it didn't go back down to one point whatever. Yeah, there it did. All right, let's change this resistor and see what happens. And let's just see what happens when I cut it out. Not much of anything. All right, jumping that resistor out with a known good one doesn't seem to help any. So let's check this one one more time and make sure. Ah, so now you're going to read good. Now that I have you out of the circuit, that's okay. There's enough enough here that I can J-hook it back in. Okay, I'm going to have to realign this thing. I uh, lined it before and got it right. Now 1390 is coming in at the top of the dial. And I think I know why. I think I was too hasty in aligning the tuning condenser after I hosed it down with contact cleaner. I should have let it dry first because I know from past experience that contact cleaner or control cleaner will throw off the alignment of a tuning condenser. You have to let it dry. So let me redo that. All right, I tweaked the retweaked the tremors on the condenser, and that really perked it up. But now we're back to overloading the audio circuit when I turn it wide open. And I really think that resistor is a bit too big. I know that's the value selected from the factory, and they probably did that. So when listening to a weak station, you know, the audio amplifier stage would have more gain to where you could hear what was coming in. But on stronger stations, it overloads. Well, testing the audio output tube, we have a short. So, yeah, that could impair performance some. Commandeering. All right, changing the 50L6 to an unshorted one got us a little more volume and less distortion at maximum volume. Commandeering the Twitter account of Donald Trump, and that's maybe the trilateral commission shortly after they point the... All right, while we have the tube tester out, might as well test the other tubes just for the heck of it. All right, this 12SQ7 is a bit borderline. It's probably still usable, but I think I'll find a, a better tube and just see if it, it improves our performance. And checking our diode section, diode 1 is good. Diode 2 is kind of on the weak side. And found something new at the top end of the dial. Something from my uh, uh, middle school and middle school days. All right, I'm getting some squealing at 910, which is sometimes normal because of the being double the 455 kilohertz IF frequency, but it wasn't squealing that bad before. Jumped out the AVC filter with another point one in parallel with it, and that cut it down tremendously. Of course, it also cut the, the uh, volume level down, too. So I think we're going to disconnect that original AVC filter one more time and and just uh, jump a point one across it and, and its place and see what happens. All right, new cap, some squeal, AVC filter, original cap, a lot of squeal. Yeah, I think we are going to change that AVC filter. And I think we're also going to go back to a metal 12SQ7 tube because it wasn't doing all that with the metal tube. But we can clearly tell that the 
the good cap makes a difference over the original so we'll go ahead and replace it but not tonight it's getting late and I'm getting cranky and we don't we don't need to be that way so this thing can just sit right here and we'll get back on it tomorrow you know this is not just sit here and change all of the parts and see what happens this is actual real troubleshooting which sometimes involves substitution of parts had a technician tell me one time the best test for a capacitor or any other part for that matter is a new part but even at that I still don't believe in just going in and willy-nilly changing stuff you ought to have a little bit of an idea about what you're doing and, and, and substitute in the area where you think the trouble might be and this capacitor is a 0.15 at 400 volts with a 69 date code on it it's something that was in a bunch of junk I got that was from a TV repair most likely something he cut out of an old TV chassis alright on second thought I went ahead and installed it alright changing the cap got rid of a good bit of it but it was still prominent I went back to the metal tube and it's fine now alright now I'm gonna call it a night okay back on the radio and I decided to clean up the mess that someone made rewiring the loop antenna which was connected wrong by the way and I also need to put something here to stabilize this so I can mount it back up on this bracket without it falling off now like so many other loop antennas on these types of radios this one has a primary and a secondary winding the secondary winding is your main antenna that this right here one terminal of it connects up here onto the tuning condenser one terminal connects to the AVC line then you have a primary winding which basically just couples the uh, signal from a received from an outdoor antenna if one is used to the main loop antenna winding here the secondary winding and the way that connects in this particular set your outside antenna connects to this end of this paper capacitor the other end of the paper capacitor connects to the winding the primary winding on the loop antenna and then the other end of that primary winding connects to the chassis which in this case happens to be circuit ground and the purpose of this capacitor is to isolate the uh, external antenna from circuit ground here for safety reasons well I got to looking at this and I saw all kinds of old jumbled up wire that looked like that looked like the uh, primary winding of the loop antenna here that somebody had removed and it was all wired wrong let me show you how it was wired they had the AVC wire connected to this terminal here which formerly was the uh, would have been the uh, ground terminal for the uh, primary winding well since the primary winding was removed and, and they used pieces of it for connecting all of this up to the chassis there was nothing at all here so the AVC line was going nowhere they had the they indeed had this wire connected to the tuning condenser and they had the uh, return lead from the secondary winding connected to the chassis instead of the AVC line so I have it temporarily connected the way it's supposed to be as far as the primary winding I'll see about that although it's not needed unless you want to connect an external antenna to this set and I'm probably not going to do that but I may just wrap a couple of turns of old wire around here just to have some sort of coupling in case I ever decide to connect an external antenna and then we need to stabilize this some way where we could mount the loop antenna to this bracket and it not fall off and of course I need to clean the chassis up a little bit and clean the tubes up okay I guess you could say that I recapped this 
Here's the audio coupling capacitor from the volume control to the grid of the 12SQ7. And off camera I did an AB comparison between this cap and the solar seal tight that was in there, which appeared to be a replacement. And I could tell a little bit of difference for the better with this good newer cap in it, so I decided to go ahead and change it. I went ahead and fixed the loop antenna, I got it wired correctly, and I replaced the antenna isolation cap with this blue disc capacitor that came out of some television or something or another. So yeah, like I said, I recapped this thing, but mostly with vintage parts, or USA-made parts anyway. And the only parts that are probably not USA-made are... This was one resistor that I replaced, this across the line AC capacitor, and probably this blue disc capacitor, but everything else is USA made vintage components. And as you can see here, I rigged up something to stabilize the loop antenna, and that should hold it in place, and it should stay that way unless you give it rough treatment and if you treat a radio the way it's supposed to be treated there won't be any issues here people were looking at next door he said he thought people were trying to break in to his house Doug, back to you well first of the year we had five AM stations in the area and then 1290 lost their license because uh, they couldn't play by the rules and now it appears 1450 the sports station is off the air even though their FM translator on 99 point whatever is still going and if I'm not mistaken, that's against the rules. If the if you if the AM is off for any reason, the FM translator has to be shut down too. So, but maybe I'm missing something. Actually, I would say quarterback. Um, turn. All right, I'm ready to put this uh, back in the cabinet. Thing, so I'm looking. And then after sundown, we'll do a little. DX reception on it and see what we get. Happy Mother's Day. All right, here we are back Radio. together. And like I said, after sunset, I'll come back down and we'll do a little DX on this. Now let me show you something a little interesting from the historical perspective about this radio. In the bedroom. Check out hymns and... Turn the volume down a bit. All right, now a little historical perspective on this. You probably can't make this out. I can't make it out that great, but it says Fort McPherson, GAPX, which would translate into Georgia Post Exchange, March 1942. And there is a name and ID number written above all of that, but it's so faded, and between that and all the dirt, I can't make it out, and I'm afraid to try to clean it because it might rub off what little writing is on here, but apparently this radio was bought by someone who was most likely stationed at Fort McPherson not long after the United States got involved in World War II. I just wished I could read the name. It would be interesting to see who this radio was originally purchased by. And I've also heard and read that a lot of soldiers would write their name and such on belongings such as this to help deter theft. Now, as far as these address labels on top of the radio, it's actually two, one posted on top of the other one. And I can read part of the bottom one because part of the top one is worn off or been torn away. Now, I'm not going to disclose any names or addresses. In fact, I can't make it out completely myself or on the slim chance that these people might still be alive and living at these locations. But 
the best I can tell, both locations are apartment complexes in Atlanta. And from what I looked at on Google, they look like they might have been hotels at one time that were, or motels that were turned into apartments. But I don't know. But I think I'm just going to leave this radio cosmetically as it is. Might go back in later and try to glue this grill bar back in because it's on the verge of falling out and I don't want it to disappear. Crazy day. Crazy there. Other times when we do this. Would never be doing something to make me look. Can we all agree? Severely overmodulated gospel station. Let's see if we can get anything right now, about 4.30 in the afternoon. There's that little country station that's real weak. Something real weak. I mentioned at the very top that I was going to take a little bit of time, not too much, here at the end of the day. On uh, the story, by the way, Dan. We'll try it again after dark. Yeah, it's about 7.30, and there's our classic country station. Had WABF coming in a little while ago. That's at 14.80. And somebody singing a Sunday kind of love, a female singer. Not sure who it was. But then a couple of other 1480s started popping in on top of it, so that took care of that. That's our gospel station, or one of them. And I don't know what this is. Okay, maybe this is 1480 taking a growth spurt. facilities for individual workouts for cats and blazers. No coaches or Now, go to mycomputercareer.e Like it's no big deal. Bus driving is drunk driving. Two 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 one three three. That's two two area. A little early to get much on the lower end. Sounds like WSM. This is WJRD out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. They're an oldie station. 
Yeah, that's probably it. But yeah, they don't come in very well, and unfortunately, they have to cut back to lower power at sunset, so they'll be cutting off pretty soon. Galusa's Truly Channel. You're on 1150 AM, 102.1 FM, WJRD. KRLD. The standard reason that would be 1070 WDIA. Which uh, has the same effect of having a. As WWL. An unprecedented 20.85 million jobs were lost in April, a decade of gains wiped out in a single month. Correspondent Mark Strothman on who's... I think that's K-A-A-Y, Little Rock, 1090, I believe. I'm John Hunt. We have been fighting the war of drugs for a long time. Sounds like 1480 is coming back in a little bit with the... John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John sound like. But yeah, we we have some good AM stations that I can get at night, but unfortunately they're all rather weak and inconsistent, but Nighttime is about the only pleasure I get out of AM radio because there's nothing locally, you know, unless the sports station, which I wouldn't listen to anyway, is is going to come back, and that leaves us down to three AMs: a news talk slash sports station, a black gospel station, and a southern gospel station with occasional preachers on it. So. Not much in the way of oldies or classic country or nothing like that. Mm, here's some classic country. Bushy's back. Now, Jack. That style might come back. Don't be blue. That hairdo. It's called the COVID blue. Ouch. That was a high note. All I'm saying. To brush it. I think this is 1240 San Antonio, WOAI, I think. Okay, yeah, 1200. WOAI, okay, good. And the fear that we... Everything you need to Business Bureau, so called. What we think ought to be investigated. Doing good right now. WSM. Okay, as you can hear, this radio is a pretty good performer here at night. Yeah, 
Yeah, me fixing this thing basically out of the basically out of the junk box reminds me of my early teenage years. You know, I didn't have all the online resources to get parts, and I couldn't afford the retail price capacitors at the parts house. So a lot of what I used to fix stuff was stuff that I cut out of old TVs and whatnot. All right, there you go. Hope you got something out of this, and more to come later.